Alright, what is up YouTube? We're gonna play some Shadow Knight, a couple updates. Hey Johnny, how you doing? Yeah, things on Moto have changed a lot over the last since since humans won the GP. Like I was I was dominating this deck. I probably had my best run on Magic Online. It was up probably 300 tickets or so. But built towards, built a new, added a couple cards to expand my collection a little bit, but things have, things have changed up quite a bit. Um, I'm going to draw. I really don't like this hand. Like these traverses are just lay of the lands. I can interact on turn two, that's kind of slow. This hand's good if my opponent's playing like a Colonnade or a Bloodbrain Elf deck. Um, we'll keep this. It's harder, you know. Okay, Eldrazi. This uh, hand's actually not that bad against Eldrazi either. Eldrazi Mimic. Unfortunately, we're gonna let this go for a turn, and I'm gonna go get an Overgrown Tomb and just Traverse for a land. <coughs> I don't win this matchup because you just have to have your Death Shadow. You just need to outsize them because the removal doesn't really matter, especially with the Eternal Scourge. You have to be a bigger deck. Eternal Scourge, yep. Pretty ideal start from our opponent. This is going to be big. So I could just go Traverse for another land. Thoughts the Inquisition though, that seems kind of mopey. Maybe we're gonna get Tarmogoyf into play. Like, get Tarmogoyf down. If we get Thought Knots here, my opponent's gotta pump the brakes because of these Death Shadows. <clears throat> so this is all fine. Here comes Thought Knots here itself. Yep, it's quite the curve. So I am gonna take quite a bit of damage here, but if my opponent attacks, then I get the dominant battlefield presence. <clears throat> so. I'm gonna take seven. You probably should take a Death Shadow, to be honest. Because double Death Shadow would be bad. If my opponent curves into Reality Smasher, like, that's gonna be pretty tough to beat. We took a Death Shadow. Okay, I'll take seven. So, if I thought sees them, I go to five. Then I can hit, like, a Reality Smasher. Do I want to make a land drop also? I can't make a land drop and play. Yeah, I think I'm going to Thought Seize them. It's going to put me to five. Yeah, we couldn't let this. We can't let that happen either. Oh no, that Eternal Scourge doesn't matter. Maybe I have to take the Dismember. Because the Dismember allows them to interact on co in combat now. But if they just. If, they, if this is Reality Smasher lands, are just dead. What happens if I just take Reality Smasher and then take Dismember? Then this Tarmogoyf is four to five, six. My opponent cracks me for six. I eat a creature. If they play this, I would eat the Thought Knot Seer. Go to one. Oh no, the Thought Seize kills me, so I can't do that. Yeah, I just have to go play a Death Shadow. That still just kills me on the board. This dismember. This dismember has been an issue. You gotta play the dismember, right? It just kills me. Okay. No, no, this, that does it too. Yeah. So I had to take the reality. I had to take the... Yeah, that was a mistake on my part. I had to take the Dismember and then hope he missed on a turn on the Reality Smasher. Yeah, that was stupid. Too much energy? Okay. Oh, hang on one second. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Dark Throne. Okay. 
So in this matchup, I think that the game, like I don't really know how to sideboard against this deck. I don't know if I want to like cut the Blood Braid Elves and get linear, or if I want to bring in the K commands and slow, like, you know, try to like slow down my game. I just don't really know. Because I think I like, I like Liliana in this matchup because it like, you just, it deals with Eternal Scourge every turn, which is kind of nice. I don't want this Collective Brutality and I probably don't want these Lightning Bolts. So, I'd probably just like split the difference and maybe go something like this. Because I can't, they can't beat Battle Rage. As many decks can't beat Battle Rage. Like, I guess Battle Rage is either your best card against a lot of decks or it's your worst card. I'm going to try this. I'm not very confident in this in the sideboarding here. I might want more commands to deal with chalices. My little puppy is wound up tonight. He just had a good checkup. All right, this is a pretty good hand. We need a threat, but we can clean up. We have disruption on one. So I'm going to fetch an overgrown tomb because no matter what, I'm using my mana and I want to cycle the Street Wraith first. There's been so many humans recently on, on Moto, and that humans is just, you can build your Death Shadow deck to be okay against humans, but for the most part, it is not very good. So my opponent's basically mulliganing to, oh, that's a combo. All right, Overgrown Tomb. Cycle. All right. All right, I'm just gonna take the Thought Knots here. The rest of these cards don't matter. My, what did my opponent do with the other? They kept a, they skipped, they put a card on the bottom. So I'm just gonna take the Thought Knots here. These cards are small, small ball. The Serum Powder you could have also taken just because it could shut him down on mana. Tarmogoyf, oh, okay. The Tarmogoyf there would've been awesome. I think these Death Shadow decks genuinely have, even though, okay, so now there's Matter Shaper. These Death Shadow decks tend to have a good matchup against these Eldrazi decks, because these Eldrazi decks are meant to, their big advantage is that they play under-costed creatures. All right, that's not a bad draw. So we're guaranteed to use our mana anyways this turn. I guess we don't have to. We could get it no, because we're going to Traverse. So there's no sense in bobbling ourselves. They have a Simeon Spirit Guide. I think I'm just going to Traverse for Tunnel Life. I don't really want my life total to get super low here. So let me go get Stomping Ground. Like, hovering around 9 is pretty good. And Tunnel Life's already, like, pretty large. More effectively uses my mana also. Draw card off Bobble. I actually had this neat interaction where I bobbled myself and then fetch. Okay, so we know my opponent's hand, Serum Powder. I bobbled myself. What is this? Oh, bring him back to Eternal Scourge, okay. Um, I bobbled myself and then got to like look at the top card before I Blood Braid Elfed to see if I wanted to fetch it away or maybe not cast Blood Braid Elf. Okay, that was a good hit. Okay, so he definitely sacks this matter with Shaper. Gets a Chalice. Chalice probably goes to his hand. Puts it on the battlefield for zero. Oh gosh, I've, I've, they made a mistake, then I made the mistake. Okay, so do I want to attack? If I attack, I threaten to trade my Liliana, which is... Or they threaten to kill my Liliana, which is fine. I think I'm actually getting in with both. That's kind of weak to Reality Smasher. 
one, two, three, four, five. If they top deck Reality Smasher, they hit me for eight, and then I'm kind of in trouble. I guess we'll hold this back, because if we get to trade with Eternal Scourge or a land, that's okay. Never played against Chalice on zero before. And I'll just trade with this Eternal Scourge here if my opponent comes in. Because they would need like a Relic or whatever, the whatever desert. Oh, they were doing that so they could activate their Sea Gear Wreckage. Okay, I see now. So that's their plan. They should have Wreckage in their upkeep. But then they'd be pretty tight on mana. So this has to be like a Relic, yeah. That sucks. So I'm definitely gonna... We're gonna see. Alright, well we're gonna cast this. Alright, we'll cast Tarmaloif. Cast our little fella. And then I'm just gonna attack with the elf because of this Muta Vault. And then I'll tick up and ditch my artifact. So at least now I've got hit my opponent's next creature covered. So they sag there. Sub their list, why I won't removal. Oh, I've just been playing a lot against a lot of humans there from Durger. They just, okay, so they just see Gate A lot more humans lately. And humans is tough. So now you can go like exile his scourge, get his scourge back, so we played a waste. Yeah, humans is a rough, rough matchup. So, and Blood Rail is not very good against the humans deck. So now we get to get our opponent's last card. Unless, what are they playing here? Okay, it's Eternal Scourge. I might just edict this Scourge because it'll grow my. Yeah, so let's go cycle this first. Play that because it's going to get a land in the graveyard. Get Planeswalker in the graveyard. Is my opponent dead? One, two. Yeah, they are just dead. They were dead to like the fetch land and the battle rage. I also just noticed that I've been doing well against like the Jun decks. Like, um, you just kind of beat up on them because you have more copies of Blood Raid Elf in the late game than they do. So I thought I could take away a little bit from that matchup. I still have like the commands to grind with. I don't really know. I just this this is a difficult deck to sideboard with because I could see playing Chalice as playing Stubs to deal with Chalice. Probably can bring in like one more of these. I'm gonna cut this because this will help deal with Chalice of the Void as well. And like they have some stuff I can shock. I have some neat Death Shadow tricks. Cut this battle rage on the draw for another piece of removal. Also, yeah, I think we're. Gonna, I don't really. I'm not very confident in sideboarding against this deck. Hey, Philly. My puppy's just all sorts of energy tonight. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. We get through the bobble trick, and we have interaction on one. We just have to hope that we don't get um, chaliced out of this game. Okay, so there's Temple. And there's the Chalice. So it's just like an Eldrazi Mimic. Alright, this game's gonna get harder. Mishra's Bobble. So basically now. I probably should have just got that tapped because this Death Shadow is not doing anything. I'm not going to cycle now because there's nothing that like I really want to cycle for. I'm probably just going to cast this Thought Seize because I need to make sure my Tarmogoyf is big. Nice. I mean, I did that too. 
Okay. So now we're in business. So we're just going to pass. Abrupt decay this. Depending on what my opponent does next turn, play Liliana or like Thoughtsy's Death Shadow. This is a thought. This could be a thought on Seer. Oh, they're just emptying their hand for the relic. Okay. So I'm actually going to just decay this and then see what my opponent's doing on my turn. The old one of Abrupt Decay. Alright, let's get a little more information. I really don't want to run this Liliana out because my opponent easily could have something like a Reality Smasher here. They haven't played yet. They haven't played anything for a little while. So I can go fetch land and then traverse for a Blood Bright Elf and play a Death Shadow. I'm getting low on life total, so I do need to be conscious of that. So maybe it's just better to get another Death Shadow. Yeah, I'm just going to get another... I'm just going to get another Death Shadow. Well, that's worse against if my opponent top decks a Chalice. There's nothing my opponent's going to be able to do about this Shadow. So, I... But I'm already so far ahead, I don't think I need any more resources. Yeah. We're like miles ahead in this one. My opponent would have to top deck like a threat plus a dismember or something like that in order to like interact with this thing in combat. All right, well he ripped a reality smasher. Glad we checked last turn. So now I'm just gonna edict play another shadow. I block. 100% block. My videos for top deck production should go be coming up soon, coming up today or tomorrow. So that can go give me a basic, which kind of sounds nice here. Because if I have a five, then I'm dead to a to a smasher. But if I just go down to eight, I could just fetch shock nine. Then next turn. Fetch shock nine, then both my creatures are lethal. Eight, and only one of my creatures is lethal. So yeah, I think I'm actually just gonna go fetch shock. Sorry about that. All right. So edict, attack, play another. So I think in this matchup, the more that I play it, I'm starting to think that like Blood Braid Elf is not where you want to be in this matchup. And you might want to be like, just the Death Shadow game, like lower to the ground. Because you, you just, they can't interact. It's, it's not a resource based game. Like, they can't interact with. Take my lightning bolt. They can't really interact with. Okay, well, throw it out the window. They can't really interact with, like, my little, my big creatures. It's not a grindy matchup. All right, well, good way to start out. I'm gonna go get a glass of water while I put the deck up. Watching your, your girl? How is she? How's he using this one? I think he's wired. Okay, join for the second match. I played against guy, this guy before. I don't know. I can't remember what he plays though. Oh, his hand's fine. I'm gonna go Thoughtseize Tarmaloif. 
Probably Inquisition, Time of Life. Opponent Logan's a 5. I think they play Titan Shift. If I remember right, I think this is a Titan Shift deck. So you know you play too much Moto. Yes, Methylene, I think I think you would be... Oh, gross. So what do they do? They put a card on the bottom. So I'm just snapping off this Expedition map. And we'll let him slow trip his way around here. I think that, yeah, I think four stubs is like... Four stubs enables, like, my whole plan. Chromatic Star. And we're just going to play Tarmogoyf. Um, definitely going to shock myself because we don't care about a life total. This matchup, when it's over, it's over. Probably going to go Thoughtseize, Bolt them next turn. If they just go, like, Tron piece, okay. All right, so my Goyf's going to be big. I do think, like, four, four stubs in the 75 allows, like, my shenanigans to happen. So I think I just want to limit all of their draws here. Like, it's pretty mopey, leave, like, taking a Chromatic Star, but I just want to, like, stop what they're doing. And I'm actually just going to bolt them now. And play this, because you bolt them now, just, it's a four-point lightning bolt, because it adds a point to Tarmogoyf. They have that in hand. And they have a Walking Blista. So they have a Ballista. That's the only card we don't know. Yeah, four stubs. It enables me to like be greedy with my main deck configuration. What is this? Are they tapping all this mana for? That's kind of an unfortunate draw. Yeah, it allows me to be greedy with my man with my main deck while being able to like compensate for my issues after sideboard. I have an IQ this weekend. And I really want to beat like oh god. It's a big ballista. Just be a big ballista, please. Don't be like something huge. Just play a ballista. Relic is bad. And into worm coil. Yeah, that was that was rough. I think we're pretty much dead to this because of how the main deck is set up here. We don't have the battle rages. So I'm pretty sure that this just kills me. I guess I could like hit a Liliana and we could continue to play games. Because we can slog through the tokens, as long as this is a good hit. It's going to have to be six. It's going to have to be like... Yeah, that's, that's not... Yeah, we're just dead. That's not going to do anything. Oh, that was like a very unfortunate set of draw steps from our opponent. Alright, so we don't want the Blood Red Elves. We can cut the forest. Um, brutality's not that great. Abrupt Decay is like okay on the play. Fatal Push is not good. So I have these seven for these. And then the question is, is I probably just want to try to shave. Maybe I want to cut Terminate also. Because like Terminate dealing with the creatures once they hit the board isn't very good. Just keep a couple decays in for some reach. Yeah, I think this is what we're going to do. We got a little bit of direct damage in the deck so that like we might be able to fight through a resolved worm coil engine. My version is very low to the ground with three steps main. I've been playing it like a legacy Delver deck. It's been great. Yep, yep, I definitely... That, that's how I played it before Blood Raid Alpha's unbanned there. Methan. I think right before Blood Red Elf was unbanned. Oh man, this Dan, this hand would be like. This hand's so good if we hit a, a green land on turn two. 
and all the lands left in our deck are green, except the Blood Crypt. We go Thoughtseize, Artifact, into Tarmaloif with Colgon's Command. We get two draw steps at it. I think I'm going to keep this hand because... Oh, I'm going to mulligan. Alright. This hand's like not much better, but it is better. We're just going to put this on top. We're going to shuffle it away. We're just going to pray there's another land on top of our deck. Yeah, that's. I played it with two stubs in the main deck before those cards got unbanned because humans was really good. And like humans is a pretty poor matchup. So I'll take this expedition map. And then we'll thought seize like the Sylvan Scrying next turn. And if we don't hit a land, if we hit a land, we're just gonna play Tarmogoyf. Expedition map. Land. That's a great hit. So my opponent could like could go for a Sylvan Scrying and kind of punish us here a little bit, but it throws him off Tron for another turn. Okay. Okay, so they go... What do we think? So if they go activate this, get a Tron piece, we hit them for three, play another Tarmogoyf, we play Time of Life, they get a Tron piece. Okay. I think our best line here is to actually just attack with this Time of Life and play another Time of Life. Because next turn I can go like Thought Seize afterwards and hopefully get like more power into play. I think establishing the clock is re really where I want to be here. Because this three points a turn isn't going to be good. And if we, we really wanted to hit a land. Land would have been sweet. And there's still a turn off of a Tron. It's not like they're going to Tron us next turn. But they are going to guarantee Tron us on turn four. Which is kind of what we're looking at here. Which is kind of sad. Yeah, I think I've got to just... Because like this isn't enough of a clock on its own. And two Tarmogoyves coupled with this Battle Rage might be enough of a clock. I think I'm just going to get the target work down. Because it's three, then next turn, it's six, maybe eight, and like if we have a good thought seize, maybe it's even more. Okay, so there's the mine. The star. There's the scrying. So we're definitely thought seizing this turn. That's not a bad card to draw, also, as it's just like another threat. Oh, they have double Oblivion Stone. And they're going to have it on eight. God. Those have just been some unfortunate back-to-backs from our opponent. We can't play our Shadow because they can just go like Oblivion Stone and crack it next turn. So there goes the tower, the stone. So at least we're going to get in for some damage. Hopefully they crack this beforehand. A land would have been... Well, I guess they would have, they would have had Tron anyways. And again, we're just gonna like, he's gonna crack this at the end of our turn. We're gonna untap, play another Goyf. Jeez. Um. Wow, that was some good ones. Those are some good ones off the top from our opponent. Those were some winners. 
All right, I appreciate everybody showing up and hanging out tonight. My name is Dylan Hubbard. You guys want to wander on my stream. Uh, you guys should check out Card Hoarder as they sponsor the stream, the best bot chain in the Magic Online business. Check out Gamer Craze, which is all, all this stuff's linked below. They um, sponsor the stream as well. They have a very competitive buy list price. YouTube is where all of my streams are archived. So if you miss something, you should check it out there. And then you should uh, just interact with me on Twitter. That's where I love to chat about magic. Okay, this hand's pretty good. We're like, it's got it's got three lands. It's got Delirium on turn one. So it's a turn two Death Shadow. The Blue Mage forever. Well, this just isn't, isn't super accurate. So now I'm going to have to do some thinking. I do like playing against Burn a lot. Fatal Push, okay. I think I'm going to want that fatal push. So what I'm going to do is we're going to draw this card because they if they have another this hand's kind of soft like an Eidolon. I need to think about how I'm going to like if we're going to play this fast or we're going to play this slow. Vexing Devil. I think I can just keep. I think I can just let this stay in play, as long as my plan is to. Yeah, I'm trying to let this stay in play. Legion Loyalist. So we're playing. It's like a more lower the ground deck. We're not playing against like straight burn. Bobble. Alright, I don't want bobble. I think I'm gonna fetch a basic. Basic swamp. Push this. Next turn, I'll thought seize. In between thought seize, the fetch land, and the cycle, I can get my death shadow into play if like that's what I should be doing. Alright, so now I can just play two Death Shadows. But that might be worse. Yeah, I think when in doubt, you just play two Death Shadows. Like, my opponent double... If my opponent, like, double Goblin Grenades me, then, like, such is life. But I'm going to get a Blood Crypt, cycle this. I'm just going to put, like, immense pressure on my opponent. The second Death Shadow definitely changed things a little bit. Because once you get two of these in play, it's it's much meaner. Obviously, it's much meaner than just one. But if I had taken one more damage, that Street Wraith could have been a surprise, which might have been very relevant. A very relevant thing in this game. The surprise street rates are so good. Okay. Just like a revolt zoo deck. Bushwhacker. Okay, so depending on like what my opponent knows about Death Shadow, this could this could be bad. Yeah, all their creatures have first strike. But they all deal damage together, so like my shadows will still will still grow. So I should just eat two of his creatures, take seven, and then thought seize him next turn. And I can push one of them. 
or just kill him. Unless he's got a land lightning bolt. So we've got our good old opponent. Yep. <laughs> First time I've ever won on my opponent's turn. All right, so this matchup, board out all of the grindy elements. I'm gonna want these brutalities, the battle rages, and the angers. Most of the time, I like because like the deck like this could easily have like goblin grenade in it. So I like sometimes Stubborn Denials, but I think I'm going to keep that out until I see them. I don't want Liliana's. I actually would rather have Death Shadows because sometimes being able to thread the needle with a shadow is important. And being able to make sure I have Delirium. I actually want to keep the Blood Crypt and cut the Watery Grave. If I see Goblin Grenades and Blood Moons from my opponent, then I'll board the Watery Grave back in. But... I think this is what we're going to do here. 17 viewers. I hope everyone's having a good night tonight. I hope everyone's doing well. Yeah, so I have an IQ this weekend. I think this is what I'm going to I'm going to play some form of Traverse Death Shadow. I just don't know. I don't know how how big my deck's going to be. I don't know. I, don't know, I, just, I don't know the exact makeup of it yet. I'm going to keep this hand. I have an Inquisition into a Collective Brutality. So it's a pretty good hand. This is going to get a Black Weed Cliffs. Relic. That's annoying. I don't understand Relic from my like aggressive decks like this. I just don't get it. Eats it. You got it. So now we're gonna need like a death shadow. So if we if we get a death shadow, we're in good shape because there's lightning bolts. I have liked playing with lightning bolt back in the deck. Like I do like how it's added just another it's like a become immense out of nowhere. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt, legion loyalist. So I might as well just take this lightning bolt. Because I can easily kill I can I can kill this and this saves me some damage. Yeah. It's kind of a mo pretty mopey thought sees. Then I'll just brutality the loyalist. I say I wouldn't mind if he had drawn like a one drop there. I know there's something else just to get some a little bit more brut a little bit more out of this brutality. So I could just three mode this just to make him use this. I think I do have to three mode this. But I don't know, I would ditch this and this probably. Because it is just gonna make him use his lightning bolt and if he drew like a goblin raid, something with a lot of reach, then I'm gonna wanna hit that. And maybe like my opponent will Think I'm getting close to delirium and just pop this. I should have pitched. I should have pitched one of these traverses. I'm not thinking. That was stupid. I should have pitched a traverse. That was dumb. I was like, yeah, that was that was just like egregious. One of them should have gone. Should have kept the land. Yeah, that was just super dumb. So we're gonna get bolted down to 13, up to 15. And then maybe we'll find something here. Yep. Yeah, that was just dumb. Okay, so my phone's hand's terrible. So at least we have a chance. Which might mean they'll, they'll pop this relic, which is good for us. Nope, that's a good draw. That's a very good draw. This card is super annoying. It's one of the more annoying cards out of their deck. I 
from an awkward draw. Okay, so what that does at least is it lets me it lets me like abrupt decay this on my opponent's turn to at least get them to use it. I didn't even tap it, man. I'm probably just gonna decay the valley, honestly. Like I need to start using it. And then if I like decay this, I can bolt something. And at least start to like work towards delirium. I guess bolt and decay only have one one type. But I do, I do need to start getting towards delirium. Or if I at least if this relic's gone, then it's gonna let a tarmogoyf at least begin to become effective later in this game. Yeah, I definitely messed up with that brutality. I should have gotten rid of one of these traverses, and then I'd have another land. But All right, I'm just going to decay this. Like, yes, I get, like, this isn't a very good trade, but I need to get them to use this. And at least this leaves one type in my graveyard. I'm going to put a Thought Knot on this stack via Relic. Okay. All right. So now I've at least got three quarters of the way there. Just gonna go get my swamp. I'll hold this. Probably this might become be a tap land. Probably be like a tapped blood crypt. I'll probably tap stomping ground. I thought it's letting out pretty bad. Which has at least given us a chance. <laughs> what is this? Alright, well, I'll kill that. Get another one. Just a bushwhacker. Jeez. So how much is this? This is nine. Can I even afford to fetch here? Nine down to four. These go back to one ones. I'm gonna just assume that I draw a bottle or a way to get my death shadow into play next turn. If I fetch the three, if I fetch the three, then I have to block this and I take two. I fetch the four, excuse me. Math's hard. I'm gonna fetch. I'm just gonna get stomping ground. I wanna, if I draw anger, I don't want to have to take a bunch of damage to do it. So, I'm dead either way. If it wasn't dead either way, is that four? Okay. So now I just hit that and gain. Yeah, I'm definitely, I definitely have not played this game super, super well. Purely just a bit tired and I've made a couple mistakes here. But I've got time. I misused my brutality. Uh, I didn't think that fetch all the way through. Tormod's Crypt is basically like that's, that's a wicked beating. At least that means they're not killing me, but if I draw like a bobble here, I'm gonna cry. All right. I board everything out. Did I board out all my creatures? I thought doesn't have a lot of reach left in their deck. They've only have, they've gone through two bolts. Alright, well. There's a chance. What are they drawing? Okay. So now I need like removal spell into anger of the gods. Nope. I guess I could have bobbled myself and then traversed it away. If just in case. 
All right, so let me think about my sideboarding again here. Let's get this on the Planeswalker in the play. I'm going to cut a Traverse. Maybe I just want everything in my deck that, like, kills something. So maybe, like, on the play, cut an Inquisition. Just keep these K commands. Maybe cut another one of these. Just get a little more aggressive on the play. Yeah, we'll try that. Just get anything that, that can just kill something. Just get it. It's good in there. Hey, Ski, yeah, we got some Blood Braille going on tonight. Yeah, we'll, we'll be doing a little bit of... We've been doing some cascading tonight. Heater. All right, well, we've got our... We've got our sideboard card. We've got our land to cast it. We're not going to bobble yet until next turn where we can scry. Just going to hope our opponent goes nuts. Um... So I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna do more than four damage to me. Because they'll attack me next turn, so I think I'm actually gonna get rid of it. And it's enough pressure where I might not even have to like do anything. Like they, they could just do that and then do nothing else. Alright, we don't want that. So I'm actually just gonna fetch or tap stomping grounds. Again, there's just no need to go without a shadow. We can just hit the brakes and take it easy. This brutality can do some stuff for us. Thoughts is isn't terrible. There's one in the main deck and two in the sideboard. We're down to we're down to three remaster. So I might play more than that, but I just wanted to give this a whirl tonight. Okay, so there's only the foundry. Jeez. So I could just thought seize them. I'd like to set up something where this anger is really good. The problem is, is like because of how their deck is, if I have an anger that's really good, I usually I probably just took a million points of damage. So maybe just hold up. If my opponent gets like too intense, I can like command, make them discard a card, shock this thing. And they're probably gonna still put enough power on the board where I can anger. Like anger is probably gonna be good in this game at some point. All right, they're, they're looking to do some damage. This brutality, I'm probably not casting this thought seize. With how this game is playing out, this thought season is probably going to be fodder to this collective brutality. Okay, that's pretty good. Always yield. Always yield. I don't know if it will be better because of this card, right? Anger kills this. Do I want to K command this? I don't think so. I'm just going to take three, fetch, anger, get my two for one. And hopefully they add something else to the board here. So I don't know what they have in their deck that will be good after combat for a creature. I got a Death Shadow to follow up here. That's not bad. I mean, I don't know. We have we have all the removal in the world. We just need a threat. Just one threat.
Why is there a pause here? All right, we're just playing another tap land. Because, like, if we draw Tarmogoy, if I want to go Tarmogoy Brutality next turn. Oh, gosh. We could just be dead. Might have gotten too greedy against that other guy, which was frustrating. I always wonder if he can bolt me out of the game. I mean, if he's got a surge card, he kills me. Yeah. That was that was unfortunate. And that was just we just did not I guess I could have mulliganed my opening hand. Yeah, I just didn't have a threat coming. And that like I did that to myself. I boarded out traverses also. So that that was just sad. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Yeah, I was, last week, like, I was turning over some tickets with this deck, but this week, man, has it been, things have been changing a little bit. I went a little leaner, trying to lean things out a little bit, but Jay Santiago. All right, we'll keep his hand. We'll, thought, we'll bobble thought sees. I can traverse for my second land if I need to. If I naturally draw a second land, then... I can go, I can thought seize again, depending on what their deck is, and then play a Death Shadow, play a big Death Shadow. So they kept a card on top, so we can see what that was. Should have done it before I've, well no, I'm getting a black green no matter what. Blood Stain Mask, probably playing against Jun. So this should be fun. Nope, nope, we're playing against Brix's Shadow. So this is a pretty easy, I think, Gurmag. Well, they can't really get the Gurmag. I think this is a pretty easy sh Well, this could be Command. This could be like Command and take Death Shadow, or it could be Command and Angler. I would like to find another land, but I think I'm going to take this Gurmag Angler. Because Gurmag Angler is just like the, one of the harder decks for us to answer. So next turn, I can like Thought Seize again and either take Death Shadow, K Commander, Lightning Bolt. Okay. Alright, let's play a land first so we don't get stubbed. Because I know four out of the five. No, Jace the Mind Sculptor. So we're not touching the Jace. I think Jace is actually very good with that Shadow deck. So I played, I got a video coming out for Top Deck where I did a, a video series with two Jace the Mind Sculptor in my Grixis Shadow deck, and it was Aces. So I think I'm just gonna, I could just take Lightning Bolt and then play Death Shadow. Which sounds kind of mopey, but like I'm not like this lightning bolt's actually gonna stop me from getting my shadow into play and getting pressed. So I think I'm actually just gonna take it, as mopey as that that is. And I, I would be surprised if my opponent has the time to get this. I like get this Jace down, I get this K command active. Like, worst comes to worst, I can just take this Kologon's command with a Collector Brutality next turn. I don't think I'll be doing that, but it is an option. Okay, so they got a push. So they have three cards. It's actually not a bad draw. So I can traverse, play two shadows. 
which I kind of like. Just keep the pressure on. I would like that to be another land. We have not gotten to Blood Red Elf time yet. So the Elf should be very good in this game. My opponent needs to go runner, runner, lands. But if they go runner, runner, lands, then they're likely in... If they go runner, runner, lands, then they can probably cast this shadow, which is going to be tough. Okay, so now i got to find an answer to that. It's a 3-3. Three, three. They just cast it. They forgot to fetch. Yeah, that sucks. My opponent just forgot to fetch. So let's see what we were drawing. Okay, so that would have been either a fetch land, which the fetch land would have made them block, or it could have been, or probably been another shadow because of how shadow works. They would just blocked one of mine, and then they just would it would have grown. They probably killed me on the crackback. That's unfortunate. I feel I feel bad for my opponent. It's always embarrassing when something like that happens. Okay, so I want this. I want one of these. I want. I don't like going too overboard with these K commands. Boy, my my deck is actually kind of soft in this matchup because these bolts aren't very good. Granted, they're decent because of um, they're decent because my opponent has Jace. So maybe I should just like keep one in. So I wrote one of these out. But my board definitely is soft to this matchup. You just don't see this matchup as much as you used to. I'm going to be like, going to go slow with my life total. Because if this game goes long, we should be in good shape. Bolt also like incidentally kills Snapcaster Mage. But yeah, when you have like an edict effect coming down. One of the most annoying things is when they just flash in a Snapcaster Mage in response to the Liliana effect. Yeah, this hand's great. We'll have Delirium on one if my opponent takes my Death Shadow. And they're on the Mulligan, so we should be good here. Okay, so now we get to do the Bobble Trick. We're going to lead with our thoughts Thoughtseize, because I don't want my opponent to go, like, Thought Scour. I do think we want this Blood Ray Elf. It's just going to be so good for us later in the game. And we can, like, find our next land here. I'm going to cast the... Like I said, I'm going to cast the Thoughtseize, finish my Thought, because this makes it so they can't go, like, Thought Scour in the Delve card next turn. They'd have to stub this, which would make it still possible. But they want their card on top. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of this Angler. I'll trade resources with my opponent. Yeah, so like now they're like somewhat obligated to take this Blood Red Elf because we're almost there. Like this, this has got to be double discard spell, right? Okay. The Blood Red Elves should pull their weight here for sure. Especially with how this game's lining up. Okay. And they're gonna take the elf. Then I'm definitely gonna Inquisition them on my turn because the card they kept on top of their deck is um, they kept a card on top, and, they, and that's the only card we don't know. And it was worth not fetching for to discard, which likely was wrong, but it's at least good to know like what that card is. What could it be? What could it be that's scary? A Death Shadow would be scary. A Delve card. I'm just going to do it, because next turn I can go Tarmwoyf into... I can go like Death Shadow, Tarmor, Thought Scour. I wish I had played my Tarmor. Um, I'm 
Now I'm trying to traverse for a shadow. I played Whispers of Emrakul before the Wash. I've, I've definitely like registered it. I think it's like it's, it's a good card. I don't think it's I don't think it's where this deck wants to be. I think Collective Brutality is like a much better effect than that card is. Like they do similar things. So I'm gonna just leaves the land in their hand. Okay. They do similar things, right? They're both good against combo decks. They both can like be very tempo positive and get like pseudo two for ones. Like Collective Brutality doesn't necessarily always get a two for one, but it turn it can turn like some of your useless resources that wouldn't do anything into cards. It's a bolt, okay. It's unfortunate. You always feel real bad when your Death Shadow gets lightning bolted. That is never a good feeling. Gas. So I'm just gonna get a basic. Now nah, we're gonna go. We're gonna go hard. I'm not gonna cast that. It's the sad part about Blood Red Elf sometimes, but. Get in there. So my opponent plays a big shadow, then we're not necessarily out of the woods. They're shocking. So this has got to be a death shadow? No, they just concede. Okay. It's been a very quick league. Close back up. I got all four of those trophies last week. And it was like I think this like this this deck like last week was very very good and I've definitely struggled a little bit more this week, which doesn't make me confident for my IQ. Yeah, it's kind of very good. I think the more that I play with Blood Red Elf, the more I want it to be like the top end of my deck that I ignore is in my deck until I draw it. Until I like, top deck it, if that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna cycle first. I wouldn't mind drawing a land. His hand would be, you know, very good if I could go like uh, draw a land and like do two things on turn three. I love it when I, th I love thoughts using my opponent after they mulligan. So what do they do? They put a card on the bottom. The molten rain doesn't do anything. I'm just gonna, I, I'm just gonna take molten rain. Like the lightning bolt doesn't do anything. The Death Shadow is an uh, the Blood Red Elf is annoying, but next turn we can go like Thoughtseize, Thoughtseize. Do have to worry about my life total. Probably play my land tapped next turn. Dismiss. Let's see what's on top of my opponent's deck. Oh, well. All right, we have a lightning bolt target. Oh, they're gonna miss a land drop. Yes, yeah, so the game's just the game's just way over. So I might as well just take molten rain. I guess I might as well just take Molten Rain, Stone Rain, as like getting my lands blown up would be really annoying. And my opponent has to draw many, like two lands in a row to get the Blood Red Elf, and I think they're just gonna be dead before that happens. Alternatively, I take Tyler's Tracker, bolt this, and then still be swinging through. Yeah. Lightning Bolt, this Arbor Elf. Pretty much changing no matter, like we're, we're, we're pretty far ahead here no matter what, I think. 
Like if my opponent goes runner, runner with lands. Oh, we didn't need to draw a land there. That would have been nice. Corsair of Crufix. That's going to be annoying. But, oh, they, they still can't cast it. So it doesn't matter. Should have left that in my hand. Because I'm probably not going to cast it and go to... Uh, and go to six. So that we can get double vaulted or like one shot off Blood Raid Elf. Now nah, I don't really... Now I'm not super worried about it. I know every card. Yeah, I actually X'd out of the Courser. So the Courser is the last card that I X'd out of here that I know they have. Has everything going on there? Okay. Okay. So just push this. Make Goy Fuger. So in this matchup, I like actually just getting really low to the ground and just like not getting Blood Mooned out of the game. I'm not super in love with Collective Brutality on the draw. Sort by Converted Mana Cost. I like just countering Blood Moon. Um, don't like these cards on the draw. Oh no, I would actually do like, excuse me, I like the Brutality, cut a land. I'll bring in more Brutalities on the play but I just like all these cards better. I like the pushes to be able to make sure I've got, like, with this configuration, I've got 10 ways to answer, like a turn two Stone Rain, or a turn two, or nine ways, or 10 ways to do, like, to deal with a turn two Stone Rain, or a turn two uh, Blood Moon for my opponent, because I can either push the Mana Moron, or stub the effect, which I really like having. So sometimes I board out like a Tarmogoyf or a Traverse in this matchup because they bring in some graveyard hate. So this hand's literally all I want to, and I get three looks at a land. And I, I think I'm gonna keep this hand because these these can be. I get three looks at a land. This hand has everything that I want. It's got this, this, and threat. Yeah. I tend to be pretty loose with uh, hands like this, especially when I'm on the draw, because of like, and you have, you have, like, these, like this is such good payoffs. Like if I go fetch land, traverse, another street lay, like if I obviously I miss on all three lands, then I'm in a lot of trouble. But I do like how this this hand has a, a just a very high payoff. holding priority okay there we go jackpot so let's go so we might hit a bobble okay watery grave stomping ground I think yeah it might just be it might just be watery grave blood crypt like we might we might just be like we don't need a green spell to win this. Well, yeah, I do remaster because I can stub it. Right, they've only got two mana. Right? Don't don't they get don't they run into force spike? Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it's just worse. I think it's I think it's worth missing out on green mana in order to get these two down. I just want to be able to cast this Battle Rage. We might just get mooned. Oh, Nissa. Alright, so we're probably just going to Brutality the token. I could just attack with both. Later now I'm just gonna attack. How does this go wrong? I attack with my opponent with both. Like, can I just ignore this? I can just attack my opponent with both. Hold up stubborn denial. Stub something. And then next turn. I can either, like, just kill my opponent. I think I'm just ignoring this Nissa. Yeah, but if they have Sprawl on one, our pushes and bolts would not be effective. Yes. Yep, you're right. That's why we play the stubs as well. No matter what, if I've got a Stubborn Denial or a Fatal Push in my opening seven hands, I'm not getting turn two... Molten Rain, Stone Rain, or Blood Moon, and that was that was my that was my point. If I have unless unless I have the removal spells, and they don't have a creature, like they could easily have, you know, something. They could have like the Utopia Sprawl draw, and if I have a Fatal Push, then I'm SOL. I think we're just gonna attack my opponent, play Death Shadow, and pass. I think we're just gonna like. Ignore this Nissa because if we attack my opponent and they don't block and I draw a land, then they're just dead. They might not be just dead, but they're probably pretty close to dead. Okay. Yeah. And it might not line up right, you know? Sometimes it doesn't. Make a plant. Yes, I make plant. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna stub this. I wanna be able to battle rage. Six, five, eleven. Yeah. This is just Overgrown Tomb. This is why Ponza is bad. My opponent's like, this is why Ponza is bad. Attack my opponent and then just battle rage one of these. Still have hand disruption, yep. Yeah, this is yeah, you're you're right. This is like annoying, but not that great. Alright. So let's went three and two, which isn't great. Lost. Lost the feel batter to goblins, and then lost lost. I would have lost like even if I'd have drawn well against Tron, I would have lost that match. I just I don't think that the, I don't think you can play a shadow deck. I don't even think you can play a black green deck and effectively play against Tron right now, which is kind of frustrating. So let's open up this chest. See what we get. Twelve items. We got ourselves ten play points. And some cards. What do I like? I don't know. Part of me wants like a touch of graveyard hate in my sideboard, but I don't know what I would cut to move it around for. I've got those little creatures, and these. I guess I'll just jump back into another league and then give it a whirl. I might not finish the league tonight as it's kind of late. So, but we will at least start another one. 
and hopefully things turn up a little bit. I appreciate everybody showing up and hanging out tonight. Um, if you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. My name is Dylan Hovey. I'm a part of the Card Hoarder Network. So if you have any Magic Online needs, you check out Card Hoarder, the best bot chain in the business. Gamer Craze is a store where I learned to play Magic. They also sponsor the stream, so you should check them out. They've got good prices because they foster like a couple college environments. I always put my archives on YouTube, and I love talking about Magic on Twitter. And all that stuff is linked below. The best way you guys can support me is just by like going and subscribing to my YouTube video, my U my uh, YouTube channel. Like that's free, and that's a great way to help me out a little bit. It's just like that's free. That's the best way to do it. Yeah, like Trons. The thing is, is like what's really frustrating about playing against Tron. What are they doing? Are they discarding? My opponent, it's my opponent's turn, right? What is this? They rolled a five. Oh, they put a card on the bottom. Okay. I guess that makes sense. But even like, how does this perform against strong? Not good. Yeah, we're, we're just not very good against Tron. And that's like, that's because Tron is very good. Traverse. I don't need a traverse. Tron's a very good deck. And. The issue with Tron is that you want, unless you're playing Stony Silence, you don't really want any other cards against Tron because they don't overlap. Like, Fulminator Mage is fine, but Fulminator Mage is not like, you're not like fist pump Fulminator Mage against really anything in the format except maybe Valakut decks, but I think Counterspell is the way to fight Valakut. Okay, so we're playing against like Control deck. Oh, I just like F6 to my turn while we were talking and I had an Inquisition. The struggles. All right, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna play two shadows and then if my opponent bolts one of them, they bolt one of them. But they would miss the land drop, they would need to draw a land and have the lightning bolt. Like Full Air Mage is, it's, 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 and it's not even like the Dampening Sphere might be the card that turns things around because like what that card does is it makes them interact with you before they play turn three tron and they're on the play which is very good so this is gonna one of these gets bolted okay such is life this is a matchup where the blood red elves should should shine i'm just gonna take this path this goes get stomping ground. I just want to play Tarmogoyf over like having kind of a weaker turn. No, it's all right. We're going to win the game no matter like even though that happens. My opponent mulligan to five. Okay. There's a very real chance my opponent's just dead. 5 9. Traverse. Yeah, now they're just dead. Traverse. 6 11. 8 13. Bolt them. We didn't even show them our elves. Okay. All right. So I don't like the decays. I don't love all of the street wraiths. And I don't love all of the lightning bolts. Bolt does hit Jace, but I think we're going to lean on Blood Bright Elf to handle Jace for us. So what we do want is we do want this, this. We want our grind package. We can leave in like a Miser's Lightning Bolt and then bring in another Collective Brutality. I don't like having too many Brutalities. I could just board out this Terminate also because Fatal Push does what Terminate does with better. I'm still tinkering with this sideboard configuration here. 
Looks like there's seven million vials, angles, and souls, and cyborg. It's it's a that's a good makeup there. The rush. I actually so play this version here. I have the video going up for Top Deck Productions. They should it should be going up soon. And I played this. And like this cyborg of this deck was an abomination. It was the cyborg was just not very good. But this main deck felt like gas. Right here. With this Grixis Shadow deck. Like this deck felt sick. The sideboard was disgusting. Like I, I need to f I, I don't I don't really know how to build a Grixis sideboard. So I just kinda like threw a bunch of cards together that I liked. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. But I played this deck and liked it a lot. I would cut this Terminate for another Lightning Bolt, though. I think I like Lightning Bolt right now. I might cut a Colorgon's Command for like a Terminate, though, because just because of the amount of uh, humans that are run, starting to run around. But I did really like this deck. The Jaces were like aces all night. I played against Blue White Red, Blue Moon. I played against a Collected Company deck. And I played against Jund. And the Jaces were just like the nut. Yeah, we're gonna keep this. We get to do the Bobble trick, we get Delirium on one with a discard spell and our Headmaker. I have zero Jace, the sadness. I don't think we want another one of these. Unless we just want our plan to be mono blood right elves. Which is like probably enough to win us the game. Yeah, this the sadness. Um let's get an overgrown tomb. You gotta open up those Masters 25. Alright, Supreme Bird is gonna be tough to beat. This is like a terrible hand. I'm just gonna take a Snapcaster Mage. We're gonna be able to slot, like, we should be able to set up, like, his best card against us is this Supreme Verdict, but the way that our hand set up here, we might be able to play around that Supreme Verdict or only throw one creature into it. A Tarma Wave off the top would be the stones. That's not bad, because I actually can go like... I can go Traverse. Traverse for a Death Shadow. No, Traverse for a... Sh now I can traverse for a Street Wraith and play Death Shadow, which is going to make my opponent path this Street Wraith, this uh, Death Shadow in order to deal with it. And it's just going to get me another card deeper. I assume there's a path coming. Path to that path is going to be kind of annoying. Okay, so they hit the land. All right, so let's bobble myself. Do the bobble trick. We want that. The problem is we have to take a lot of damage in order to cast it, which I'm not like super wild about. So I could just cycle it. Then I go to six. I'm just dead to like lightning helix, snap lightning helix. So I actually don't think... 
that I can afford to play and draw that. So let's go play this Wooded Foothills. I'm going to attack my opponent. Then I can either cycle this, doesn't do anything. I think I'm just gonna pass. Like, my opponent's in kind of an awkward position where this path to exile deals with this death shadow. They're gonna try to Nibless Obstruction me. So what do they have in their hand? I know their hand. So I'm actually gonna just gonna draw this Liliana. And then I'm gonna like draw this. Then on their upkeep, deal with this thing. Just get a tap land. I still have this Street Wraith to cycle. This Liliana is going to be very good against my opponent's hand. Just because like they have so many spells, they're going to discard a spell. And then it's going to take a lot to... They could have pathed their own thing there, which might not have been a terrible play. The gen match would really get better with Jace and with Souls. Fromberg, do you mean... What do you mean? You Out of which side? Dylan? Cody fucking Jones. How are you doing, my friend? Alright, we're going to cycle this bad boy. We're going to hit a land drop. Tilt. We know their hand, so we're just gonna ditch our we're gonna ditch our fatal push. Then we're gonna bobble on their turn. What movie would be greatly improved was made into a musical? I don't know. What are you doing for work now, Cody? Opponent ditched path to exile. Mm, wow. We need a land drop. We need a land drop bad. So our opponent's going to draw a Jace the Mind Sculptor. They're going to slam it. What are they going to do with it? They're just going to brainstorm. All right. Give me a land. I'm doing okay, Cody. I'm a little tired. It's been a long day. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember you talking about that. Land. Okay. All right, now I got to think. So they didn't hit a land drop, so they're brainstorm locked. So maybe I just go, like, tick up, ditch my, ditch this. Traverse for a land. I can just traverse for a land, play Death Shadow. But I don't really want to tick it. Um, I could be greedy and just get another play two Death Shadows because they could have the Snapcaster Path. Yeah, I'm gonna get that because Snapcaster Path is their best out to what we're doing here. So let's tick up. Oh, Cody Jones, thank you very much for the bits. I appreciate you. What a guy. Number one on the on the cheer, the cheer section. Now what do they ditch? Flooded strand. Wow, so they just didn't want to make a land drop. So their hands like stacked. We're going to hope that they deal with one of these with a path to exile. And hope they don't have the second wrath. Thank you very much, Cody Jones. Parmesan, Johnny. It's not close. Okay, so they bounce one of these. Okay, that's not bad. 
I'll have to restart Moto after this match. This is getting a little... Moto's getting a little laggy. Yeah, I've been doing... I've been really enjoying streaming lately. Like, I like the new mod... The new modern format is so good. Um... So my opponent has a Snapcaster Mage somewhere. And they have a Lightning Healer somewhere. Mana Leak. You don't say. Okay. I'm gonna ditch this Bolt. I missed Sequence there. I should I should have ditched I should have discarded first. What would be the absolute worst name you could give your child? Johnny. I'm gonna ditch another Jace. So they have Snapcaster Mage and Lightning Helix. They're drawing Snapcaster Mage. Okay, I'm just getting a little aggressive. So this is kind of awkward. So their last card is Snapcaster Mage. So if I tick up, they go snap path, and then I can spin the blood braid wheel. But if I tick up, then I can't spin the elf. So let's just go minus. Well, fuck. I could just attack and then see what they do. Because their last card. Let's tick up. Oh shit. This is tough. I might I could just ult it. If I ult it, I'll separate red lands from white lands. And then go to combat and see what he does. So he needs to float here. This is the last card of Snapcaster Mage. I think so too. Arkesh, I think that's what's going to happen here, but maybe they target Path to Exile. So we're just going to take his red lands, separate his red lands and his white lands. So we're going to double stone rain. Move to combat. Let's see what they do. They go snap path. I'll blood bright elf. Okay, so they are going to path to exile me. They use their red mana. Okay, so I'll make him use it, and then I then I'm just gonna like. Because he's got Supreme Verdict in his deck, so they don't have a lot of Lightning Bolts left. There's not a lot of reach from our opponent's deck. So let's get Forest. And there's no dif there's no difference between casting the Blood Bright Elf and not casting the Blood Bright Elf, because if we don't cast it, they just attack us and kill us. Nope, we're not going to cast that. And then we'll just pass the turn. Look to trade with the Snapcaster Mage. The old hit them while they're hellbent. All right, easy, Cody. I'm just gonna trade this because I can. I've Colagon's command in my deck. Very random play by opponent. If he didn't heal it, really. Hmm. I guess that makes sense too. So Traverse would be good. Probably would just Traverse for a Death Shadow. Just play like an 11-11 or 10-10 and like hope it's good enough. Could Traverse for a Bloodbraid Elf. And we could spin the, spin the wheel for fun's sake. But I think that that's probably just worse than getting this guy.
He did very random play. I don't understand what you mean there. I'm trying to dissect what you said. Very random play by opponent if he didn't Helix Lily. All right, he's got a Colonnade. All right, you got one turn, opponent. Snapcaster Mage kills me. Lightning Bolt kills me. Supreme Verdict kills me. My opponent passing the turn, not conceding, probably kills me. All right, that's probably a pretty good draw. So now if... He helix your face instead of the light. So it makes a lot more sense to snap helix and hope to draw burn. Yes, play consistently. Okay, so now I can actually just go. I'm just gonna put I'm gonna get back a death shadow because it's just super efficient here. Red. Get their last card. So mana leak. Biggest thing you can say while passing a stranger on the street. Alright, well, there's the first match. Probably one or two more matches tonight. I doubt I'm going to finish the league. I'm tired. I definitely think that I want to treat... I don't know how I want to ha like have these Blood Red Elves be. Like, do I just want to like move back to three Liliana the Veils and just board all these Colagons commands? I have generally disliked Colagons command in all Death Shadow decks that don't have Snapcaster Mage in them. It is pretty good when you're returning Blood Red Elves. That is a long game. Uh, they're double queuing in a mod. I hate it when people double queue. You're just wasting my life slowly, but. Surely. Okay, so we're playing against this deck again. So this is going to get us Overgrown Tomb, and we're going to Inquisition a Chalice. That is our plan. Oh, they're playing like the red deck. Shoosh. Alright, let's go take this Rabbit Master. At least our. So there's that, that, was that their mountain? Yeah. This is like the lock lock you out of the game red deck. Now we're just gonna get Blood Crypt, play Tarmal Life. Thoughts he's a Chandra. I think I'm gonna play. God, it feels kind of gross playing a Death Shadow into a board. Yeah, we're just gonna pass. It's a chalice. Okay. I'll get stomping ground and then just start ticking up. Johnny, what is what is what has got all your questions going here? Like what is what has got you in this mode? Did something good happen today? I 
Wait, I'm just gonna ditch this. This card's not doing anything. He actually Slagstorm my Liliana. Slagstorm's a card that... I thought about playing this over Anger of the Gods in my sideboard, because you can randomly just Cascade into it. Don't Blood Moon me. Chandra, okay. Alright, so there's Slagstorm and another Chandra in hand. Decay this, put an artifact in the graveyard, attack, tick up, play Death Shadow. Ditch my Planeswalker, keep my Lightning Bolt. That's the plan. I'm doing all this out of order, but like that doesn't really matter at this point in the game. My opponent's dead to two different things next turn. So I might as well just attack this Chandra. Because, yeah, they're just dead. Slagstorm me to send a message. Okay. What are some funny ways to answer questions like how's it going or what do you do? Ask them if they have nose trouble. All right, so they probably definitely have like ensnaring bridge in their deck as well. So we're just gonna go. We're going low to the ground. This is just like that that free win red deck. We're gonna cut our fatal pushes and bring in at least one copy of Battle Rage. Get rid of this Terminate. Bring in two copies of Battle Rage. What's the most imaginable insult you came up with? You're obtuse. Let's hope they don't gemstone mine, Simeon Spirit Guide me, Chalice. Yep, that ain't good. <laughs> Rip. Bumble Tuna. <laughs> My opponent's not doing anything. I have a lot of cards I can't cast. Bumblebee Tuna. They're just gonna play another Chalice just to like make sure the first one's good. Desperate Ritual. So this is like a Blood Moon. Eidolon. All right, I'm gonna go get, I'm gonna get Swamp, Forest. Can't kill this thing. All my cards cost one. It's from Ace Ventura. Peanut butter is called peanut butter. What are they called? Delicious goodness. cast that. I take two to do it though. I didn't think about that. I was so excited that I had a card that I can cast that I was like, oh, I don't even care if this thing does me a million points of damage. Chandra. Okay, so we need like, we're looking for an Abrupt Decay. If we have an Abrupt Decay, we're probably actually going to win this game. If we hit Abrupt Decay or Colgon's Command, we've got five outs in our deck. A Liliana might also win us the game. Opponent's not doing anything. I'm gonna have to go to six at best. Just Shatter Shock, that would be sweet. Shatter Shock, play a Death Shadow. This is things that dreams are made of. Alright, we're let's get things are getting hairy. <laughs> I just have seven one <laughs> cards in my hand. From this chalice. I'm not gonna fetch for blue. I'm just gonna leave this around. There's no need to show my opponent what's going on with that. 
Show me a K command. Okay. Shatter shock. Shatter shock play one shadow. The shadows itself is still like a two turn clock. So we just saw Battle Rage, we went next turn. Cast them, send a message. Right into the Eidolon, too. Oh no, this is another Chalice. No, is this a Blood Moon? What is this? Ensnaring Bridge. I guess I'm just gonna go traverse for Death Shadow, play Death Shadow. Just like load up. Let my opponent know that they are dead as a doorknob if I draw an untapped land. Or if I draw a way to get this off the battlefield. Just like these guys are just sitting here chomping at the bits, ready to get at it. Sweet. I don't even know why I'm casting these. What's invisible, but you wish people could see it? Carbon monoxide. Real talk. Pyretic Ritual, okay. Blood Moon. All right. You got it, sir. I probably could have just lightning bolted them, but now they have the Chalice and Blood Moon. All right, things are getting harder. Can't do anything with that one. Yeah, dude, this is literally one of the most anemic games of Magic I've ever been a part of. Okay. That probably beats us. I think that kills us. Because it locks us. Right? I don't think I have an out to two of these. Because I need K Commander or Rupt K, and all those cards are gone. Like I can't cast them. Right? Do I don't have an out for that? Nope. No outs. We're gonna scoop them up. My opponent will eventually draw a land and then will kill me with these Chandras. But we'll give it to him. So now do I want removal spells? I guess I could go like this. But I don't think that I want to do too, too much sideboarding. Bolt him, send a message. Maybe he'll forget his chalice trigger. And then still not go very low. Okay, this hand's pretty good. We have a Stubborn Denial for the first couple plays. We can lead off with a Tarmogoyf. Hopefully our opponent goes nuts here and like pitches a, a guide. One, two... Hope they don't have a second Simeon Spirit Guide. Gas. Alright. 
get this big old garmatoid down. I don't understand what makes people want to play these kind of decks, because it's like, you're just sort of all in, you know, like, you don't, I don't want to say you don't make decisions, because like, every magic deck makes decisions, but, you just, you're just all in. Now here's the hot question. I think I play around a Blood Moon. Yeah, I think I'm just going to get a basic forest. No, I'm going to get this so that I can K command through a Blood Moon if one of those ever resolves. Oh, I missed sequence that. Yeah, this is gonna be my last match tonight. I am, I am, ex I am a little tired. My opponent's probably like rolling over in their chair right now. And then we can even answer the K command. So aside of like a, a, a Wrath, I don't really know what my opponent draws here to win them this, to get them out of this one. Okay. Get in there. <clears throat> okay. I think that's it for me tonight, guys. I am pretty tired. Just seven matches tonight. I'll be back here on Saturday to finish up my stream, finish up testing out. I have an IQ next weekend that I've got to go to. So um, let me pull the deck list up here. TV slash card holder. Yeah, I was. I'm. I'm pretty happy. I mean, the problem is the meta game is like moving a little bit, and it's back. It's moving back towards humans here, which is a little bit frustrating. But like, because humans is a is as as a good matchup against Death Shadow. It's either like Team or Battle Rage or. Or, or bust. So it's, it's just a little, it's a little rough. It's just a rough matchup. So I think what we're gonna do, I gotta respect that deck because we've been beating all the fair decks because we have Traverse and Bloodbraid Elf, and they don't. So we just have more copies of the card that matters the best. But we're going to send you guys over here. I hope everyone has a good rest of their night, and I will see you all later.